well. Don't hate him. There's a purpose. God created you for a purpose. And that purpose must come to pass. Enough is enough. Stand up. Leave them behind. Tell them I'm going somewhere. Somebody is holding a position on his right on a camp. Somebody here must go home with a blessing. I will overtake them. I will overtake them. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of God. Behold, I give unto you. What a mighty God we serve. This God is too much. And it's so big that the whole world cannot contain him. Because he's the creator of the whole universe. Do you have any problem? Come around. You will know that he can solve any problem. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And will love you too. I am Dr. Messi Ezekiel. I welcome you to the hour of grace. And I want you to know that you are blessed because you are somebody. We love you. Now, to start with, open Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Chapter 40 and verse 1, then George read. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, said your God. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here with a comfort. I don't know who will receive that comfort. I don't know whether you understand what God is saying. Not mass. Read again. Comfort ye. Comfort ye. Comfort ye my people. Two times. Comfort my people. Saith your God. Who said it? Our oh God. I stand here to do that. I say I stand here to do that. That's only place I would like you to stand and read. You can now sit down. I comfort you now with this message. Planting of a tree called the cross in your life. You must never, never go out without a comfort. I repeat, you must never, never on the line go out without a comfort. Devil is a liar. God assured us of comfort. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He resides in us. Now, the tree planted. You know it? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I will give you some points there and then we read Isaiah chapter 54. These two chapters. Planting of the tree called the cross and the benefits therein. Have you seen Isaiah 53? Okay. Read 1 to 3 first. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. To plant this tree by God is not easy. Look at what he said. Read again. Who has believed our report? A question. Who has believed? Because people will not believe it. 
As I'm talking to you now, some people will not believe that God planted a tree in them. They will not believe it. But for you, you are not going out here, unbeliever. You must believe it. Who has believed our report? Some people will not believe it. That's why that question comes first. Remember, it's a comfort. This message is coming to comfort you. Who has believed our report? Huh? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is the arm? Not, not finger, not hand, but the arm of the Lord revealed. Why will people not believe it? Because it's a revelation. They can't believe it. Unless it's revealed. It's not theory. It's not head knowledge. God by himself who is planting this tree must make you to know it. It's by revelation. I beseech you, open up your mind for God will reveal something to you now. Is by revelation. To whom is the arm? Do you know the meaning of that arm? Do you know the meaning of that arm? Huh? Simple. Resurrection. God created the heavens by his finger. When he was creating heaven, it's by feet. Heaven declared your handwork. It's, it's just the earth. He created with hand. But coming to resurrection, he puts his arms. It's a heavy work. Who has gotten this revelation? Who? Read on. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. This is, he will grow up as a tender tree. Small. Tender plant, and that is coming to you now. Tender tree we planted in your life, which eventually at the end of the day became the tree of the kingdom. Uh -huh. And as a root out of a dry ground. Do you know how a root out of a dry land, virgin birth? Nobody believes that a virgin will conceive without a man. A plant coming out from a, a dry land. Uh -huh. He has no form, no comeliness. He has no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, when you see him, there is no beauty. To, if you see him, that we should desire him. No beauty to desire him. They mess him up. And because of that, people say, I will with him. We don't want this man to be planted in our lives. We don't want him to be our king. Because he was planted as a tender plant. The Bible says Jesus grew up. Before you go out today, this tree planted in you by God, we begin to grow. I will show you the benefits. And who is that devil to stop that tree? Who is that devil to stop? Who is that enemy? No power, my dear brother. No power. I want to remind you that there are two main trees in the garden of Eden the tree of knowledge of evil and good that's one tree and the tree of life these two main trees in the garden of Eden and what is going to be planted in you now Jesus has so many things to, de to describe him what is going to plant to plant it in you now is the tree of life. It will produce life.
beyond your imagination. You will be surprised that God can bless you abundantly like this. Read one to three. Read. He is despised and rejected of men. Well, when he was planted, he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrow because he carried our sorrows. And acquainted with griefs. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. And when we see him, we hid our face. He was despised. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. We esteem him not. Nobody desire him. But it's the tree that makes you. It's the tree that stands in your life as a life eternal. It is the tree. <sighs> that tree will be so mighty. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like. He put so many things to describe the kingdom. One of them is tree. And he is that tree of life. Then read verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Do you know what? That tree was wounded. For our transgression. Without that tree, no healing. Huh? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded and bruised for our iniquity. That tree. Comfort you, my people. Be comforted with this tree. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Do you know what? How many of you, you are in need of peace in all spheres of your life? You want peace. Say amen if you want peace. Amen. For you to have that peace, somebody was chastised. I used to pray this prayer every day, every morning. Knowing that somebody was chastised for my peace. Then I say, cause be that person that will tamper with my peace. Because somebody was chastised for that. If you tamper with my peace, that means you are nullifying the work of Jesus, which is impossible. Therefore, I was so bold to say, cause be that being that will try to tamper with my peace. I'm correct. Somebody was just tired for me to have peace. And you want to tamper with it? Cause. Be that person. Read verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. In all these things, it pleased the Father to bruise him. He has put him to grief. He put him to grief. When shall thou make his soul an offering for sin? Mm -hmm. He shall see his seed. Uh -huh. He shall prolong his days. Uh -huh. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Without this tree, forget about ideal prosperity. Only in his hand. God invested prosperity. Any prosperity beside this tree is not prosperity. It is pragomos. Useless. Nonsense. Cannot, it's not durable. What shall it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world? And lose the prosperity of Jesus. No need, no need of being alive. That is the planting of God, the tree planted. Then I jump over to 54 to the benefit. Only two points 53 and 54. Go and study it very well. 
Isaiah 54, see it. The benefits. Verse 1 and 2. Sing, O Barry. Are you hearing that? Huh? You say what? Sing, O Barry. Sing, O Barry. Can I make an announcement? Take it or leave it. There is nobody in this church that is barren. No woman here is barren. That you have not gotten a child does not mean that you are a barren woman. No. That is not for you. He said you should sink. Instead for you to stay and have a long face. Read again. Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that did not travel with child. Now, do you hear that? He went on to say more. I want you to read it again. Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. Thou that did not bear, Thou that did not have any child. Break forth into singing. What? Break forth. Church, what? 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 Say it again. How do you break forth? Oh. Don't wait for that door to open. Break it. Break forth. And do what? Sing. Right now, if you're a woman here and you are still saying, hey, God bless me, he has blessed you already. Yeah. I command that womb to open. Yeah. How, many child, how many children do you want at a time? Three or four or five? Can you carry six? Any number you want to carry at a time. <laughs> That is only one aspect. Sing, oh ye what? Bad. Break forth. Come out from your cage. Break forth. You cannot be caged anymore from now. Uh, uh, witches from my village. Who be witches? Wizard from my town. Who are they? When the tree is planted in you to prosper, who is that bagger? Break forth. Oh, you. Bye. It's not only in childlessness. Is there anybody here the business is not going fine? You are childless, no profit. Or you don't have any business at all. You are going about looking for a job. Put red bio here, blue bio here. Any job? No, that will stop. The Bible says, break forth. Say it again. Break what? This church, are you alive? The Bible says, what? Break forth. Come on, take it by force. Break what? Forth. Forth means immediately. I'm not telling you to wait for tomorrow. Right now, as, as I'm talking to you. Break what? Come on, do it. Break what? Come on, do it. Break what? Forth. Immediate effect. Come on, open that door of prosperity. God has prospered you. Who is that to close it? It's a brick fort. What are they talking about? What is all this nonsense? I told people, I said, look, oh, God is so smart to call me to be a preacher. If you call me to be a businessman, you'll be counting my money in billions. Are you hearing me? I 
challenge all the business people here. Break out from that matter. Break out from that circle of poverty. You complain about the wish, wizards, who are they? Break forth. No more barrenness. Whatever you are doing from now, Orange, what if are you doing something at all? You will see. I told you of a brother. They came to me, two of them. He said, pray for us. They brought 100 naira. I said, for what? He said, we want to start a business. With 100 naira, two of you. He said, yes. God said, what do you have in your hand? So we said, we have 100 naira. They challenged my faith. Break forth. Don't call yourself nothing. When the tree of prosperity has been planted in you. Can I tell somebody here now? Uh, can I tell somebody? Look at me. Are you seeing me? I declare you, I don't know, a millionaire. Ah, uh, Pastor Ezekiel, how can this happen? Break forth! That small thing you have. Peter, put your hook in the water. You will catch. You will go out here to catch. Break forth. Receive the anointing to prosper. Devil is a bastard. Scary what? He can't kill you anymore. You are not a barren person. Shoot fort. Shoot fort. God did not make me to be a businessman. He had made me to be a businessman. You will see my back. You will see my rear right. I don't know, but I'm talking what I believe. The same anointing. <laughs> the same anointing that is enabling me now will enable me. Are you a child of God? Break forth. Your change has come. Look at them. Huh? Look at them. Group of companies. Group, group, group of companies. Group of companies. Group of companies. Group of companies. West African Limited. PLC. Public Liability Company. And you are here marking time. I say, break forth. I cast out that spirit that is demoralizing you. I order them to move out. For your day has come. Break forth. God has planted the plant of prosperity. These are the gains you will gain. He planted the tree, Isaiah 53, and the gain come 54. 
Unless you will tear it out from the Bible. If not, who is that bugger? Some people say, uh, that witch woman cost me. That wizard cost me. Cost you to do what? Forgive yourself. You have, you have, you have, you have said nonsense to your body. It costs you. Costs you to do what? The Bible says, break what? Fuck! You're no more in cage. As far as we are here this morning, no more in cage. And I want to speak to that brother, that person. Your money is going down, down, down. I arrest that spirit. I arrest that spirit. You will go on increment. Break what? Fuck! This is the resurrection time. The peak of history. <laughs> Chai, are, are, are these my people or? or? <laughs> By the way, let me let, let me ask a serious question: Who is your pastor? <laughs> huh? <laughs> me? Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Are you under my teaching? Our teaching. From today, go break fuck. That tree God planted in you is a tree of prosperity. Begin to plug. You will eat and be satisfied. And you will give to others. Stop complaining. Stop it. Ask God to forgive you your complaining, complaining. It's madness of life for you to complain what belongs to you. And the tree is ready. Look at me planted in you. What are you doing? Break what? Fuck! This Sunday and next Sunday, you will remember it in your life. Yeah. Sing! Oh, you! Bye! Sing! 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 Businessmen and women, sing! 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 Break what? Fuck! From my back to my front. By my right to my left. Up and down. I say to all of you, break what? Fuck! My brother, those of you, you are still living in your father's old house. Go and tell architects to draw you the kind of plan you have. For you will pray. Break forth, break forth, break forth. Say it, say it, say it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I break forth, I break forth. Amen.
Many of you know my house in the village. Many of you had been to my house in the village. You may say, ah, I started that building with 1,000 naira. That is foundation. 1,000 naira. I believe God. How that money come, I don't know. But I believe God. God has planted a tree. Who has believed our report? Huh? Who has believed? You will never remain the same. Brickford. <laughs> that money you owe, you will break forth and pay it, even pay, pay it and borrow, borrow people. I say break what? Fort. Don't tell me that you are going out from this church remaining the same. As you believe, so shall you. Watch, watch, and see what you believe. It will come to pass. <laughs> Begin to enjoy the tree. The tree has come with something else. What is that verse you read? Verse one, read verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Now, read again. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Enlarge the place of your tent. That small one room you are living in, you will pack out. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness. That place is too tight for you. I don't know how God will do it. My father built me a mud house. I look at it. This is a national preacher, as they say. People coming here and there. Let us go to Pastor Ezekiel's house. I said, for where? I said, God, hmm. it will be a taboo for an international preacher to come here and say, is that where you are living? If God can so richly bless me spiritually, what else? That that spiritual prosperity will vibrate to ordinary. We vibrate to, 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 the, to the physical prosperity. Are you hearing me? Don't jealous me. It's not my fault. That's that God is your God. The only thing I will tell you is test and see that God is good. Dare you, I dare you to believe God. Is that verse 2? Okay. This, read 3 and 4. Read verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand uh -huh. and on the left. And this, like, this is it. You shall break forth. Where? <laughs> and what? Congratulations. <laughs> the tree planted is not ordinary tree. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. Your children shall inherit what? 
unbelievers will serve your children. Unbelievers will serve your what? God will make you to be a too much person. Too much. They will come and worship your God. Am I talking to somebody? Uh -huh. And make the desolate city to be inhabited. Uh, maybe your father's house is desolate. And uh, say nobody will, you know, they go home because of that, because you have no house, you will not be put to shame. <laughs> by and by, you will like even the governor of your state to visit you. <laughs> when? Sooner, very soon. Read on. Fear not. What? Fear not. You may say, Pastor Ezekiel. <laughs> I don't know. Fear what? Uh -huh. For thou shalt not be ashamed. <laughs> I don't need to explain this one. It's open. Fear what? For you shall not be what? Read on. Neither be thou confounded. Huh? For thou shalt not be put to shame. Yeah. Nobody will put you to shame. Yeah. Your God is more than enough. Yeah. Have you ever looked up to heaven? How big is your God? He is the owner of billions of stars. The permanent belong to him. See the Atlantic Ocean, who get them? See the cattle in thousands of hills, who get them? It's your father. It's your God. It's your redeemer. No wonder Job will say, I know my Redeemer. Leave it. Hmm. Oh, share it. Read on. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Man to his word. The benefits. The benefit of the tree God planted in you. Go and read it. I just want to help you a little bit. Read it and meditate on it. Read verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts. Is his name. Thy maker is your what? Uh -huh. Who is that? Who is that? In case if you don't know. His name is what? Lord God of you cannot equal him with anybody. It's by your side now. It's looking at you now. What are you thinking? Read verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, mm -hmm. but with great mercies will I gather thee. How much mercy? <laughs> mercy. With great mercy, will he do what? Even though you scatter into medium, medium parts, he will gather you with what? Fear not! Hmm. 
Read verse 8. In a little rod, I hid my face from thee for a moment. Just more time, he say, okay, check yourself. He hid his face. But, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee saith the Lord thy redeemer in case if you don't know who is talking he say I am the Lord you are redeemer give him praise Read verse 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Sure, banker. I'm, I, I'm feeling something. I, I, I'm feeling something. I'm just feeling something now. Mm. Just feel something. Mm. Just feel something now. I, I will stop. But I will not stop until you read verse 17. Listen. Until you read verse 17, I stop. Listen to verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. You, and, wait, wait. Do you understand it? No weapon fashion against you will do what? They will fashion it. They will fashion it. When they fashion, 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 they taste it, you know, sharp. You are too much for them. I say you are too much for them. Their weapon will never prosper. <laughs> Is somebody here? No weapon. Thank you, my brother. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Fashion against you. You know go sharp. You know go prosper. You know walk. No way. Uh -huh. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Who will condemn? Me. Uh -huh. Me. Don't wait for God to condemn. condemn. You are to condemn the tongues. Everyone say, You tongues that rise up against me. By the authority of the word of God, <laughs> I condemn you. And sure shall it be. Nothing will change it to. Have you condemned that tongue? Finish. He end he, see the signature. All these things a sign signature. Read, read. This, this is now, the heritage. This is the heritage. Of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Sign, sign by Jesus. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? Shall we stand to pray? You are welcome back. I know you enjoy the word of God, which is life. 
And I know your life will never ever remain the same. After you must have heard the word of God. Please make best use of the word. Don't let your life be the same again. Because Jesus Christ is coming soon. Why don't you give your life to Jesus Christ? Today might be the only day you have. I call you to give your life to Jesus. And if you are sick, you are healed. We'll see you next week. Bye. Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. These outrage, reaching out to the troubled souls. Don't miss it. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. God has a plan for you, a plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isaka, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isaka, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. Christian Pentecostal Mission, the power of God is here.